The FiO2 that a patient's actually getting is completely dependent on what their inspiratory flow rate is. So let's say that the patient is breathing in at 60 liters per minute and we're delivering 15. Okay, that wouldn't really be high flow because remember what's a high flow device? A high flow device, it meets or exceeds how fast that patient is breathing in because essentially we're completely controlling it. So if they were breathing in at 50, you know, if they're breathing in at 60 and we're only giving 15, it's like a quarter. That's not, that's not very much. Certainly wouldn't be high flow, but it's hard to quantify that. How fast or how, at what rate is a patient breathing in? So I have a ventilation or a ventilator calibration machine here and it's going to measure my inspiratory flow rate. And then I'll put the number up and we'll see what it is. So I'm going to we'll do a few different ones. I'll start by breathing normal. We'll just see what the rates are. Just through my nose, not trying to pull volumes, it's trying to be as normal as possible, which is something I'm always trying to do. It's maybe if somebody is really at rest, very, very calm, coach breathing, uh, which is, by the way, this is one of the reasons that we tell people, you know, slow down your breathing a little bit, because when we're giving oxygen, having them slow down how fast that goes in means a, a larger percent of oxygen goes in. So that actually, when we coach patients to, okay, breathe in real nice and slow if you can, that that increases the FiO2 because you're not breathing in so quickly that it entrains room air. So that, that was a little bit difficult to do, uh, keeping it somewhere around, most of the time it was hitting, you know, 20s. But what if the patient has had a little bit of increased work of breathing? So I'll try to simulate that. I'm gonna just, for my own <laughs> watching patients, try to imitate kind of how their chest moves and we'll see what flow rates that, that we hit. It's gonna be significantly higher because it was, it was tough to keep it that low. So let's try it out. And that was even just breathing in through my nose. So, I mean, it's really easy to hit 70 if you have a little bit of increased work of breathing. I breathe harder than that if I just got done with like a really difficult set with like an exercise. So if you can kind of equate that to a respiratory distress patient, the flow rates can get really high. Kristen was like, oh, that flow meter is so cool. See what my, my inspiratory flow rate would be after I run up the hill and we got this crazy hill on the side of our house. And so she's gonna run this thing and then we're gonna measure her inspiratory flow rate. You ready? Uh, I don't know, we'll see. All right. All right, here she comes. This is an all out sprint from, I don't even know. Ready? It's so cold. Not actually supposed to make that noise. All right, so now I'll see uh, what does a ridiculous flow rate look like if you know somebody was super air hungry and I guess. I don't think a patient in respiratory distress would probably be able to pull that flow rate or that that pressure. Maybe I, I'm not I'm not quite sure. Maybe they could, but that was well over 100. If you can see on there, I think maybe it hit like 150, 60, something like that. And so those flow rates are very very fast. And so if you have someone that's very air air hungry, the chances that your 15 liter non rebreather are making up a significant portion of what they're pulling in, it's it's not very good. Uh, they're probably mostly getting that 21 percent oxygen from the atmosphere, much more so than the, the oxygen that we're using to supplement that flow. 
So always keep this in mind. FiO2, what's actually being the, the percent of, of that air that, that's made up by oxygen, that's actually making it down into that patient's lungs is completely dependent on how, what at what inspiratory flow rate that they have. So as patients breathe in more quickly, inspiratory flow rate goes higher. We have to try to match that with our uh, flow rates as well to ensure that the most amount of that breath possible uh, is oxygen if we're trying to oxygenate that patient.